We live in a world where it's offensive to preach the gospel of Jesus and to talk about his name. And I'm here to talk about it. Welcome to the Jesus is Offensive podcast. Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Jesus Offensive Podcast, the podcast that happens once every four to five months. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. How are you guys doing? Um, I was going to say it's good to hear your voices, but actually I'm just sitting here listening to my own voice. Um, <laughs> but man, have I missed you guys. Uh, it is good to be back on here. I got, I'm got i a little nervous today. It's been so long. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm super stoked to be back on the podcast. Um, yeah, like I said, it's been way too long and I apologize for that. I've gotten a lot of emails actually (laughs) since doing this podcast and people say, don't apologize. (laughs) So I guess I don't apologize for that, (laughs) but, um, no, for real though. Um, sorry that I just, um, haven't been making episodes. I know that a lot of people rely on this podcast to be filled up and, and to learn about God and, all that stuff. And, um, yeah, the, the season of life we've been in has been tough, but definitely also have made my own excuses. And then, you know, after a while you get a little, um, uh, what's the word? Um, I wouldn't say writer's block because obviously the ideas come from the Lord and stuff, but I think it's almost like you lose your motivation the longer you wait to do it. So anyways, I'm back. Um, funnily enough though, I almost didn't want to do this episode today because, I am going uh, to Indiana here (laughs) tomorrow, um, and I'm going to be gone for a good three weeks. So there won't be another podcast for another three weeks. But you know what? I just figured um, might as well just do one. Uh, I really felt God was like, you need to get back at this. And so many people have texted me. Shout out if that's you. Thank you. uh, Checked in on me like, hey, are you okay? Like, are you going to do the podcast still? What's going on? And that's really helped and really encouraged me to be like, yeah, this is something I need to go back and like pour my time into again. Um, so yeah, I'm stoked. Uh, I know it might seem like I kind of left it <laughs> and, but I honestly, it has been in my mind. I've been working on a lot of other things that have to do with the podcast in terms of some clothing ideas and things like that. Um, but yeah, let me just give a little life update first and we'll pray and we'll kind of get into what we're talking about today. Um, <clears throat> For one, I'm actually in my own bedroom, which is pretty sweet. Uh, Just got it about three weeks ago. And we moved to Montana. We moved into this house in September. And it's almost been a year since we moved in general just to Montana. We lived in our van all last summer. Um, But yeah, it has been quite the journey. And I know basically in the last year, I think I've probably only made like five or six podcasts. Um, Obviously, there were chances to do more. But just in terms of not having a bedroom, having a house under... Um, uh, you know, being worked on every day and only having it upstairs and everyone is home all the time. Uh, it was just kind of hard to figure out how to do it. And then you get discouraged and then you kind of just, oh, sorry. And you kind of just don't do it. So with that being said, again, no excuses, but, um, yeah, it was just, it was just kind of a weird situation and sorry, I'm, I'm kind of on a new setup today. So my mic thing just fell over for a sec. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we went through a lot of trials. There was a moment where we didn't have a toilet and all this stuff. I might've shared this on the the podcast before, but you know, just a lot of great things you can look back on and laugh, but, uh, they were trials. It was hard not having a bedroom. Um, you know, having to share a room with my sister, you know, as weird as that might sound at our ages, you know, it's all for the Lord. Like God moved us here for a purpose and we had to make a lot of disciplines and we had to make a lot of, um, uh, you know, we had to die to ourselves a lot. And I, I am not a pro at that in any way. Um, but yeah, and you know, I don't like to always share all the hardships and stuff because I don't want to be one of those people that's like poor pitiful me, like look what I had to go through. But just to give you guys a little bit of an update, like it was a very tough time, um, but we're so blessed. We're so blessed with this property, with this place, um, and we absolutely love living here in Montana. Uh, it's been absolutely incredible, and um, yeah, it's been great. I cannot, I cannot be mad at all. The snow is finally gone. And that was the other thing, you know, I was recording these podcasts in our van for a little while. Well, 
in the winter, the van's not heated and it's like, you know, six degrees out. So that was kind of off the table too. So just a lot of things kind of got in the way of it, but I'm going to update you on kind of where we left off. I know, I think the last podcast episode was November, December. So yeah, a lot has happened since then. Amazing things. God is moving. Um, so let me just touch on that and then we'll kind of get into our topic, but let me, let me just pray first. And also I just want to make a shout out. Um, we've had a few people make donations while the podcast was on a little bit of a hiatus sabbatical type thing. And I just want to say thank you guys for that. Really appreciate that. Uh, it means a lot to me and, um, yeah, very thankful for that. So I just wanted to make that known and never not, I don't want to ever not be thankful because man, it does mean a lot when someone takes their finances to pour into something like what we're doing here. So anyways, um, <clears throat> dear God, I just thank you Lord for, um, this moment in time, God, just feels like it's like a sports team. The guy's coming back from injury for like his first game, God. It, it, there's a little, it's a little nervous, but um, I'm also excited, God, for what you're going to do in this podcast today. Um, Lord, God, just, just let me speak with boldness, but in love, Lord. Let me speak without pride. Let me um, just be your hands and feet, Lord. Let me be your voice box today, God. Uh, and I pray that uh, people who are listening would be able to take away something very important, very um, uh, something that would change their mindset, Lord. Uh, and overall, that we would just get closer to you through through everything, Lord, we do. Uh, so, yeah, and also just be with my back right now as I'm like bending over to be on this mic, Lord, in all seriousness. Um, thank you, Lord, for this, this podcast, Lord. I never want to take that for granted, Lord. And um, thank you for every single person listening and tuning in today. In your name we pray. Amen. Sweet. Um, so the main thing I kind of want to talk about that I really feel like God's like, you need to share this is something that is almost like a testimony part two. Uh, and that's not really what this video is going to be about. It's it's kind of a jumping off point. But I'll just kind of share it because I believe that this situation happened for a reason for me to share. Um, and yeah, I want to share it. So... Um, this January, uh, this last January, I really felt heavy on my heart. I'm not going to give specific reasons. There's nothing bad. It was more just something that, um, is very personal to me in terms of what I was fasting for. Um, but all in all, it was an amazing fast. Uh, I decided to fast and I know that we read in the Bible, you know, keep your fast secret and all this stuff. And, and I'm really just bringing it up for example, not to bring glory to myself. Um, but I decided to do 21 days. God really put that heavy on my heart. Um, kind of like, uh, when, when Daniel fasted and, you know, the angels broke through and just realizing like these people that I want to be saved in my life, these people that I want to encounter in my life, I really need to be praying for them. And that, I, that's the most basic, um, version I can give to you because the rest is kind of just personal to myself. Um, but yeah, so I was like, okay, God, I'm going to fast, um, and I started off the fast. Um, and actually, I guess I'll share a little bit more than that um, because I guess it does kind of lend itself. So I'm changing my mind, good podcast. But um, I was, and I guess, yeah, this isn't that personal. I, I was basically just fasting for my future wife. Like my desire is to be married someday. Um, and I'm like, you know, I really need to get in the battle and I really need to start praying and believing that prayer has like, power in this, honestly, like if you don't pray, then that means you don't believe prayer has power. And man, that can, that, that even word I just spoke there really convicts me in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm going to fast for my wife, God, and I'm going to fast 21 days, get the angels to break through and really to make movement. <clears throat> so fast forward, we're on the fourth day of the fast. Um, it's, it's going good. Obviously when you get to like, you know, the fourth and fifth day, it is, it can be kind of hard on the third day, but we hit the fourth day and, you know, as you guys know, maybe some of you, I, I edit weddings and I edit videos for a living to make money on the side. And, um, I was editing this wedding and, you know, sometimes with any wedding footage, there's always like someone dressed a little bit inappropriately or whatnot. And I'm always kind of just skipping past that footage. But it seemed that at this wedding, I mean, I wasn't there. I did not shoot it. Someone sent it to me. It was like every single person was dressed very provocatively and inappropriately and it was very hard to edit and I'm like literally just trying to blur my eyes like to just get through the footage because I'm like oh gosh I really like I just don't this is ugh, I don't want to see that you know and, and also knowing what I was freed from years ago like I don't I don't want to go back to that you know um and it was all right but 
all of a sudden, like I'm sitting there and I just get hit with all this shame from the enemy. Like you're sinning and all this stuff. So I start repenting like, God, I'm sorry if I lust. I'm like, I didn't even feel like I'm lusting, but I don't know. Like the shame made me feel like I was guilty of something. And I just totally fell into that and like agreed with it. Um, so then I shut my computer. I was like, okay, this is like, um, I'm, I'm mad. Like, so I'm like, I'm just going to go spend time with God. Um, and all of a sudden, like, I'm trying to like, just be with God and imagine us together. And I just get all these like perverted images in my mind. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, this has not, nothing to this degree at all has happened to me since, you know, I shared in my last testimony, like I fasted and I was free from pornography and stuff. And, and to this day, I've never looked at pornography. I've not masturbated and all that good stuff. Um, and again, sorry to be specific, but I just, I, I like to be open and honest with everyone. Um, but I'm like, I'm just getting hit hard and I'm getting really mad. I'm like, God, like, I'm just trying to be with you. Why are all these like thoughts coming to my mind? I don't even want them. That's how I knew it was something weird. Cause I'm like, this isn't from my flesh. I do not desire these thoughts. Um, and then I was like, Oh, I was, I was very mad at this moment. Just not at God or anything. I was just like, what is going on? So then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go read my Bible. Well, the same thing starts happening. I can't get these images out of my head. So eventually I just go to my parents and I'm like, or my family. And I'm like, Hey guys, like, this is what's happening today. Like, can you guys pray? Like I believe, and I, I have been free in terms of like, um, my actions and stuff. Like I would say that I would, I could count on two hands the amount of times that I got tempted with lust and that it was a very hard battle in the last two years, you know, like it was, I, I feel so free, you know? And, um, but I was like, can you guys just pray? Cause this is like weird. This feels demonic, you know? And of course I'm fasting. So who knows? It might be rising up at this time. So they start praying for a spirit of lust just to make sure that I don't have a demon of lust. Sorry. Sometimes I say spirit and it's very easy for me to think that people know what I'm saying. I'm talking about a demon, a demon in a person. Um, and so they prayed to see if that I had a demon of lust speaking to me. Um, and I began to manifest. And for people who don't know what this is, manifesting is, um, when the demon starts to move with inside of you, right. And it's not possession. That word is actually not in the Bible. Go look it up. It's actually a mistranslation. If you look at the Greek, it just means demonized. It means plagued, you know, by, by a demon, you know, um, but it, they start to manifest. And what happened is my whole body seized. I could not move at all. Um, my hands came together like crab hands, if you can picture that. And my face felt like it was being stretched and I could barely open my mouth to talk. And I'm like yelling in pain because it felt like my a chest was being squeezed so tight. And of course, all these thoughts are going through my head. Like what in the world is going on? Like I've seen demons cast out of people. This is a normal thing. I've seen this with many people, but I'm like me, like I, I've been free of lust for so long. Like what is going on? Nonetheless, this is happening. I've not opened a door. I've not done anything. Like I'm like, what is going on? Um, and they cannot get a spirit of lust to leave. So my mom like frantically, like, cause again, she's seen deliverance, but it's like when it's your son, it's like, Oh my gosh. So she calls our friend, um, shout out Anna. Um, and, uh, to see if, um, she would hear anything from the Lord for me because lust is the spirit of lust. The demon of lust is not leaving my body. I'm, I cannot move my body. I am yelling in pain. And if you don't believe me, I have a video of it. Um, <laughs> I mean, why would I make this up? But, um, and yeah, so Anna gets the word shame and I'm like, in my mind, they tell me, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can see how I definitely have agreed with that in my past. Like I shared in my testimony two years prior, you know, when I was actually struggling with pornography, masturbation, all these things, um, I would really give in to shame and feel like, wow, I can't even go to God. And so therefore it hindered me from feeling God's love and mercy because I felt so guilty that I gave into this voice of like condemnation in a way. So I was like, whoa, you know, so they start commanding shame to go and boom, this pressure comes off my chest. I mean, I literally felt like my chest was collapsing, like it was squeezing it to death. My chest comes released, but still my, my hands are completely numb. I cannot move them out of like a crab hand position. And, um, yeah, I'm still not in a good way. So shame leaves. They, they proceed to command a spirit of lust, singular spirit of masturbation, singular, like I'm saying individually spirit of pornography and a spirit of perversion to leave. And all of those things manifested and they came out and like it says in the Bible, they came out like when it says demons came out and screams and all these, these spirits for me came out in coughs and crying, right? they always have to release in some way through you. Um, and again, I know this might sound weird for you who've never seen deliverance, but, uh, this is very normal. Demons are very normal. And if you listen, listen to the podcast, I've obviously talked about it with many people. Um, and this happens to me and I get delivered from all these demons. And 
I think the first thing that went through my mind is like, praise God. But the second was like, wait a minute. I thought I got free when I fasted, you know, cause I've shared that in my testimony. It's like, I almost have to go like make an abridged version of my testimony. But here, let me tell you guys something that I've been learning is that demons need to be cast out. Like if it was just fasting or if it was just repenting, then why would Jesus create casting out demons? Why would he say that that was the first thing the disciples would do? We would cast out demons because they need to be cast out. So I believe that through that fast two years ago, God totally changed my desire. He made me hate pornography. And therefore that demon was powerless because as I'm going to get to later, it talks about in James one, you know, it's our own sinful desires that lead us into sin. We can't blame demons, but those spirits, because I had opened a door to lust, I had opened a door to pornography in my past, like two plus years ago, they were still there waiting for an opportune time. And what a funny thing, right? I'm fasting for my future wife, for my future marriage, for my future kids. And a spirit of lust is coming up. I think God was trying to show me like, bro, you, these spirits, if they're still here, when you get married, they could wreak havoc in some sort of way. So praise God for that. Uh, and I know you guys are probably shocked right now because it was like a crazy deliverance. Like, I mean, again, I've seen deliverance where some people just cry or cough and it's like, oh, that's sweet. But this was like, I could not move my body. And so obviously this happens fourth day of the fast. I end up completing the fast. I get delivered actually from some other things. And I know I had shared on the podcast, like I'd never actually been physically someone had cast a demon out of me. That had never happened to me before. Uh, and I think I almost developed this pride of like, well, you know, I'm, I wasn't that bad. So I don't have demons. You know, I didn't open that many doors. But it's like, bro, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We know that sin is what the devil is, what demons love. It's what they eat. Right? So if you sin, you open a door to invite a demon in. And I've never met one person that hasn't had a demon. I've cast a demon out of a seven-year-old before. Um, we need to normalize demons. And that's why I'm making this episode. Well, one of many reasons, but I really felt like God wanted me to share that because many people I talk to say, oh no, I've overcome that. I've overcome that. But there still could be a demon attached to that. My dad, for instance, he's free of alcohol for three years. We're like, we, this happens to me and we're like, okay, well, let's see if a spirit of alcohol is still in there. We cast the spirit out, he coughs and it leaves. You can't make this stuff up. Demons only leave by the name of Jesus. Yeah. You can repent really hard and you can, you can fast really hard. But what I'm realizing is the only thing that gets a demon out is casting it out. If there was any loophole, then we wouldn't need to cast demons out. Does that make sense? If Why would God create casting out demons if there were other ways to get rid of demons? So this was a hugely humbling experience and totally changed everything for me because I haven't struggled with these things for two years and there were still demons inside me. And this really opened my mind too that I think I, I need to be free from other things. So since then, since doing the podcast, I have got free from almost 20 separate demons. And I know that sounds crazy. And some of you might be clicking off the podcast. This guy's crazy. But I would encourage you to just listen because uh, it's challenging. But I'm going to tell you it's changed my life. I have basically zero um, temptation for lust. Like the temptation that is there, if ever, it is like 10 times less than what it was before. Even though I still didn't look at pornography and all that stuff. Um I got a spirit of rebellion cast out. Um, and I noticed that in my past, like I shared in my testimony, I used to, you know, cuss like a sailor. I used to drive like a crazy person, right? Very rebellious. Okay, I stopped all those things, but that demon wasn't cast out. So it started manifesting in different ways, like sarcasm, like coming against people for no reason. Like sometimes I would just argue with someone for no reason, just because I want to make an argument. Like that's rebellion. And it got to the point where, and it's, I'm, I'm giving oddly weird specifics, but it helps to see the fruit. Like it's so nuanced that sometimes it's just in your mind, these, these demons. And my mom would be like, Hey, you guys want to pray? And every time she would want to initiate prayer, I would always like be like, Oh, I don't want to pray. Even though it's like, wait, I always want to pray. I love God. And I'm like, what is that? And then I realized it's a spirit of rebellion. I get a spirit of rebellion cast out. That's never happened since whenever she wants to pray. I'm like, let's do it. And I know that sounds weird, but I'm telling you, these are the little tormenting things like a spirit of pride. I got delivered of that. Let me tell you how that operates. You can say something the same way and one can be backed by pride and one can totally be in humility. There's a difference between talking with passion and conviction and talking with pride, but it might sometimes sound the same. Like I might still talk with so much passion right now, but in the past, in my mind, sometimes there was this voice that I started to discern that was like, oh, that was a really good point, Taylor. Oh, that was really good. Oh, you should feel really good about that. And it's like, wait a minute, that's not me. And like, I, I, there's nothing I can do on my own. So where is that voice coming from? Like that's, that's a spirit. And ever since getting delivered from pride, I have not heard that voice once. I have not heard a voice saying, oh, that was a really good point, Taylor, or whatever. And I know it sounds weird. Like, oh, you have voice in your head. Listen, 
a year ago or six months ago, I said, no, I don't have voice in my head. But then I started to discern. It's not like, like, it's just like hearing God. It's not like he's like, Taylor, go to the store today. You know, like it's a very nuanced voice and it's very quiet. But all of a sudden I do something and I have this urge to be like, that was really good. And then I'm like, wait, is that me saying that to myself? Or where is that thought coming from? And I discern that it's a spirit. So Anyways, this gets me on my whole topic because as you guys know, I have been living this life, helping people get born again for three and a half years, you know, all glory to God. But point being is I'd never been delivered of one demon until a year ago when I got spirit of infirmity cast on. I told you guys about that. And now I have seven cats. Like I used to be deathly allergic to cats. Okay. That was great. But since January, I've got another 19 demons cast out of me, fear, control, um, anxiety. I could not stop picking my fingers. Uh, if you know me, you know this, but for those who didn't, I literally had like canyons in my hands because I picked so much skin off that I would get down to like the blood. And I know that sounds gross, but since getting a spirit of anxiety cast out, I don't, I have not picked and my fingers are almost completely healed. I have not seen my fingers completely healed in over 10 years. I mean, I can't even remember. I've been doing this for my whole life. So when I say that there's more freedom, there's more freedom. And we like to put God in a box or ourselves in a box of how much freedom we can get, but there's more. And I also want to come on here to say that I'm a guy who is living this life. I am living in repentance and there were still demons inside. If you are listening to this and you believe, yeah, yeah, but I can't have a demon. You, that is probably a spirit of pride right there. <laughs> you can start right there. And, and I don't mean that in a mean way. I'm just saying that in this day and age, for us to say, no, yeah, okay, Taylor had a demon, this person had a demon, but I don't have a demon. That's just pride. There's nothing beyond that. It goes beyond theology. That's just your pride. Because we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And demons come in by, by sin. We're all sinners, saved by grace. Obviously, those of us who are born again are saints now. But my point is, is we all have a past. And we all let demons in. And again, I have never met one person that didn't have a demon. Never. So anyways, that's what happened in January. <laughs> Super fun. Um, but I'm telling you, like, I'm a different person now. Like, um, the control, when we were doing ministry, sometimes I was like, I would get anxiety of like, oh, why are they talking about that? Why are they going down this road? No, we need to go this way. We need to go. Like, I wanted to control the situation. Like, I wanted to make sure that I, like, in my mind, it was like subconsciously, I know the best way. I know the, th I know the right way to go about this. I know what this person needs to hear. You know, and again, we can discern that as, oh, that's just the flesh. But to me, I was like, the Bible talks about that we're supposed to kill our flesh. So if I'm killing my flesh and my spirit is baptized in the Holy Spirit, then where is this voice coming from? Like, I don't even want that. I don't want to even be prideful. Like, I don't, I know that my power is from God. So then I start to discern, okay, this is, this is a demon. There's not, there's no other X factor besides there's something in there talking to me, making me want to fall into these private thoughts. Like I said, those thoughts of pride, I weren't, I wasn't necessarily falling into them all the time. It was just that they were there. And I was like, what is that coming from? Hold on. Let me get a little sip of water here. So again, I know deliverance is a hot topic right now. We're going to get right into that right now. Um, but deliverance happens over time. It's part of sanctification for those of us who think, Oh, we just get freedom and that's it. We're good. Um, that's a very flat way of looking at our journey with God. Then what is discipleship? Like if you don't have any demons then why don't you look like Jesus, you have the same spiritism, you know? And again, we can't blame our problems on demons. My point is if I have sinned, I have opened a door to the enemy, right? The Bible says, if you are a friend of uh, the world, you are an enemy towards God, okay? So this is how demons work. And again, if you don't believe me, that's cool. But I have cast demons out of over 120 people, and that is all to the glory of God. I'm just saying that everyone who, is, who says Christians can't have demons, they've never cast demons out before. Everyone who says Christians can have demons are people who have cast out demons before. And if you want a bit of an understanding of how, well, how can that be Taylor? I totally understand. And it is hard to wrestle with, but what you have to understand is yes, because just because your spirit is drenched in the Holy spirit, it doesn't mean your soul is our soul is where we get our mind. Our, I mean, the soul is where we get our will, our emotions, all of these things. Oh yeah. I think it is our mind too. Sorry. So when you think about what a demon does, that's what it does. It messes with our emotions. It messes with our minds. It messes with, um, 
our ways of thinking, right? It pollutes our thoughts. It's not to say that you do not have the spirit of God in you. That's not it. But there are parts in your life that are still ruled by these demons. Like, why is it that you have to control everything? Why are you so afraid of, of, um, you know, why do you have anxiety? Like these things are demonic, you know, and you're not a bad person if you had demons. Like I just said, I had 20 demons and I was pre I, and I made 33 episodes of a podcast <laughs> that like that praise God, God is blessed. And again, I'm, I'm using that as an example, um, not out of pride, but just to say like, it is a normal thing. We have to get rid of this stigma that, oh, if I have a demon, that means I'm a bad person. You were a bad person, but you are saved by God now. But that doesn't mean that these things aren't still there. Demons have rights to people. Their rights are from our sin. If we sin, they're allowed to be there. So if you've sinned, you have demons. Um, but that's okay because that's why Jesus said, we shall cast out demons. And again, for those of you say, who say, well, Christians can't have demons. Okay, then who is deliverance for? Because Luke 11 clearly states to not cast demons out of non-believers. So if we're... So if we're supposed to cast them out of believers, then are you saying they weren't saved before they got the demons cast out or they were? No, demons are not necessarily a salvation issue. It doesn't say repent, but before you repent, go get your demons cast out. The point is these are spirits that torment us our whole life and God gives us the power to break us free. He said he came to set the captives free, right? He came for those who needed a savior. The Pharisees are like, oh, no, we don't need a savior. Okay, that's great. So a lot of us Christian, oh, no, 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 we don't need deliverance. Okay. That's cool. But those of us who know we still have bad mindsets, we have sinned, we've fallen short of the glory of God. Those are the people that Jesus came for, the people that say, I know that I'm bound to this. I know that I'm bound to pornography still. And, you know, again, you want to blame it on your flesh? Go for it. But I'm here telling you, a man free from pornography for two years, that what you are dealing with is demonic and you could be free from it in five minutes. But it's pride that holds you back from getting that deliverance. So anyways, super cool. Um, and that fast turned out to be an amazing fast. I felt so close to God. It was, man, it was epic. Like I'm honestly still like missing that time. Like it was so good that the first 10 days of that fast, we had nothing to do and it was winter. So I just sat there and I read and I prayed and, and it was awesome. Like I just felt such a connection and just doubled down. Like, man, fasting is powerful. Even though 21 days was like very hard. It wasn't as bad as you think. Like you think, oh my gosh, I would die. It's like, no, I never felt like I was going to die. I did feel hungry, but like, it, I didn't even feel close to death. I felt great. I was living, I was doing life normally. We got our wood stove for our house. We didn't have a wood stove until like mid-January. And that's the only way we can heat our house. We don't have a, electric heat. So we were going off of like space heaters. So sometimes it was like 55 degrees in our house um, in winter, but I, I helped install a wood stove on my 19th day of the fast and it's all glory to God. Like he gave me the strength, but if you think you're going to die in a fast, like that's just not the truth. Like that's the enemy stopping you from doing something that's powerful. So anyways, man, I just sped through that, but this is probably going to be a little bit of a longer episode because you know, a lot of updates, a lot of things going on, but I just want to give you guys everything I can give you. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking at the length of this podcast and holy moly, it's so long. Um, <laughs> uh, Cool. Um, well, let's move on to even the longer part. And uh, again, um, you know, God taught me through all of these fasting and everything. And again, when you get delivered, he really starts showing you like, yeah, you thought like lust and stuff. Those were your big issues like three years ago and they were. But let me take you deeper in mindsets here. Let me show you where you're actually being prideful here. Let me show you where you're not being a servant here. It's funny. Like I make that episode on pride on the podcast. And then a few months later, I get delivered of a spirit of pride. <laughs> Praise God for that. But see, that's, that's what I mean. Like he was showing me about my pride. And then once he showed me and I was able to repent and turn more from these deeper mindsets that I didn't even notice on the surface, then I got delivered of it. So another part of getting delivered is we need to allow God to take us deeper. A lot of us just say, well, I got initially free. I'm free of lust. Okay, cool. I can go tell people about Jesus. Amen. You can. Um, but allow God to take you deeper. Every year, God takes me deeper and shows me deeper things about myself that are wicked. There's still wickedness in me that he wants to purge, and I don't see it, but he's going to show me, and that's what he's been showing me. He shows me it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I never even noticed that. I repent, and then I cast the demon out that was behind that. It's beautiful. Um, but anyways, I, I want to recognize right now that there is a huge division, at least in some of the circles that I'm in, over deliverance right now. Um, and I'll give you guys a little update if a lot of you aren't familiar. Basically, what the division is, is there is two schools of thoughts. Um, and to me, they actually are very much more alike than some think. But 
we all believe that we should cast out demons, okay? Um, but there is a school of thought that says we cannot name demons. No naming it. It's just Jesus' name, unclean spirit, go. And then there's a school of thought that says we follow the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will give us names of spirits and we will cast them out by the power of Jesus' name. So, and some of the bigger arguments come over uh, that one, the first school of thought doesn't necessarily believe calling a spirit of fear out would be wrong, but calling spirit of Jezebel or like a proper name, as some would say, is demonic, is witchcraft, just to quote um, some claims that have been going on. Um, and I get it. It's a very tough topic and, uh, I've seen the division and it's very sad, but I want to talk about it, but I do not want to come in anger. I do not want to come in judgment. I do not want to come, uh, to divide. I want to actually come to bring unity and to just put a little light on the subject of things. Uh, and so I really was praying before this, like, God help me to speak out of love and not anger for maybe some of the hurt that, that this division has caused even me and my family or whatnot. Uh, we just can't allow ourselves to get to that place. Yes, we have been hurt by people who have divided over this subject, but um, we have to, and I don't mean this despite the other group, but we have to be the bigger person and and still be loving and be disciples of Jesus. But I just want to go through everything and talk about it. And I think even for you guys who don't know about the division, I would please stay tuned because I think you're going to learn a lot about deliverance today that in the past, I just have not talked about because I've just never had a huge interest in talking logistics about deliverance. Like, of course, deliverance is a huge part of our ministry, but, um, yeah. So for one, I want to say that, um, with the naming demons. Okay. So, you know, people will say, and again, if you never heard of Jezebel, it's a common thing. You know, there was Jezebel, the queen in the Bible, right? And she was a very wicked queen of Israel, um, and her husband was Ahab and, and he was technically the king, but it was totally like a feminist thing. Like she was completely the ruler of Israel and he was just her little like pawn, do whatever she says type thing. And, um, she got killed and she had all like the prophets of Israel killed and all this stuff, like very wicked person. And so people have in this century, I don't know about years ago, but they have come to find that there is a spirit or they believe there is a spirit called the spirit of Jezebel, which would encompass Jezebel, that character from the Bible, that person's attributes. Now, other people have come to a school of thought that believe that and believe that Leviathan, for instance, which was the sea creature in um, Job, they believe that that to be a demon as well. So they have called out Leviathan um, out of people and people have got delivered. So they say, and again, I'm, I'm taking this from an unbiased, as some of you can tell that know my point of view. Um, and on the other hand, again, they believe, yeah, spirit of fear, spirit of lust is cool, but no other names. So let me break down one of the stigmas for, uh, for that. When we call Jezebel to me and to everyone who does deliverance that I know, but I can only talk about my point of view, um, Jezebel is a characteristic. Jezebel is not a name. Yes, it was a name of a queen, but it's just like calling spirit of lust. All the demons, I'm positive, they have names. And we're not going to get into like the Nephilim and all this stuff, but if demons are truly Nephilim from the beginning um, and they were killed in the flood, they were people at one point and they probably had names. I don't care about their names. So when I'm calling spirit of fear, I'm not saying that that demon's name is fear. That is, I'm calling out the attribute. Spirit, basically what I'm saying in less words is spirit that causes this person to fear spirit that causes this person to lust because there's not, you know, if someone lusts, it's not the demons aren't like, Hey, call in a lust demon to go into this person. No, it's just a demonic spirit. And they, they manifest within your life in the way of lust. If that makes sense. Again, lust is not the name of the demon. I'm just calling out the attribute in which it is tormenting the person by. So if you come to me and you say, I'm really struggling with lust. Okay. Spirit of lust go spirit that causes him to lust. It's the same thing. So the same thing is here. When I call out Jezebel, I'm not saying that Jezebel, the person or Jezebel, the spirit of that woman, the, the same spirit that was in that woman is in this person. I'm saying the characteristics of Jezebel, which would be, um, uh, control, manipulation, uh, seduction, vanity, all these things come out of this person. So again, this is a characteristic. I don't know what that demon's real name is. They're just acting in the way 
of Jezebel, in the way of pride, in the way of lust. There, it's all the same thing. And yes, I get Jezebel as a proper name and lust, you would not name your kid lust. But my point is, is both of them in terms of deliverance have to do with the attributes of what they're dealing with. And I want to make something clear. So there has been people who have, and I'm not going to name any names because it's okay. Like we're all family, but they have decided to divide, um, if people do not see deliverance their way. So basically the school of thought that says you can't call out Jezebel, you can't call it Leviathan. Uh, it's just, you know, any unclean spirit go in Jesus name and they all just have to leave in one moment. They have decided to, um, divide from people who believe that no, not all demons leave in one moment and Jezebel can be called out. So, which I think is a very scary thing because, listen, if someone doesn't believe in repentance or baptism or the filling of the Holy Spirit, that is reason for me to divide because that is just the truth of salvation. I can't do ministry with someone if they do not believe in the same ways of salvation. Plus, they're preaching a wrong gospel. That is not how you be saved if you say it's the sinner's prayer or something like that. That would be deceit. That would be unbiblical. That would be sinful. Now, when we're talking about demons, demons are not a salvation issue. No one is casting out demons by Beelzebub. No one is casting out demons by the devil. We're all casting out demons by Jesus's name. So to divide against that, I actually find that to be sin. I actually find that to be biblically sin and unbiblical to divide over a secondary issue, like like having a seven-day creation theory opposed to that creation was done in, you know, a thousand days. Yeah, the Bible's pretty clear, but there's no point in dividing over that because at the end of the day, we both are brothers and sisters saved the correct way, being sanctified from our sins. So if you want to have a different opinion on things, go ahead. So for one, that's very unbiblical to divide over this. And that would be my biggest um, thing against the first school of thought. And let me back that up by the Bible. So Luke 12, 49 through 53. Okay. Now let's be very clear. Jesus came to divide and he says, I have come to bring fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled, but I have a baptism to undergo and how distressed I am until it is completed. Completed. Do you think I come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division from now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. What he's saying there is just like when Christianity came to the Middle East, uh, it divided many people. He knew that this gospel was going to divide people. It's not like Jesus just doesn't want everyone to be in unity, but I cannot be in unity with someone who does not believe in the same God or does not believe in the same way to be saved by that God, does not believe in repentance and turning away from sin, okay? I can be unified with someone that believes that you must repent, that must be baptized, must be filled with the Holy Spirit, and they have a different thought on, you know, uh, a prophecy in Jeremiah than I do. That's a secondary issue that you're allowed to have that thought. And it's not going against God in any way. None of us know necessarily. So he came to divide, right? Definitely. And that is biblical. And I I do think there is biblical uh, precedent to divide from certain groups and certain peoples, of course. Like, that's why I left my church. I can't be at a church that preaches a separate gospel. You see, when you preach a different way to be saved, you're preaching a separate gospel because that's not the gospel. If, 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 you don't, if you're not being saved the correct way, that's not the gospel. That's not good news. That's like semi-good news, you know, because you're getting a piece of it. But let me go to Luke 9, 49 to 50 because Jesus, in the same book of the Bible, did not see means to divide when it came to deliverance. And let me read that for you. Um, he said, uh, one of the disciples came and this was after, just to give you some context, Jesus had sent the disciples out and he said, I give you power over demons to heal people, all that stuff. Um, and they went out and then he, they came back and they said, master said, John, we saw a man driving out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he is not one of us. Jesus's words here. Do not stop him. Jesus said, for whoever is not against you is for you. So we see that Jesus did not divide over the issue of deliverance. Because he said, if they're for you, that I mean, whoever is not against you is for you. So let me break that down in more words there. Whoever is not against you. So are they casting out demons in anyone else's name? No, they're casting out in Jesus' name. Okay, so they're not against you because they're preaching in the same name. So if they're not against you, then they're for you. You see? 
This is Jesus' words, not mine. He came to divide, yes, but he did not divide over deliverance because um, they, those people were not against them. They weren't with them, but they weren't against them. So, and therefore they are with them. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so in terms of these two schools of thought this, that I bring back, um, the school of thought that believes, yes, you must cast Jezebel and all these things. We are not against the other school of thought because now we might disagree with the way they think, but we're not coming against them. Why? Because we're still getting our power from the same name. We're both casting out demons in the name of Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? And we need to be very clear because the Bible, if you read it, is a lot less concerned with method and a lot more concerned with power, meaning it needs to be done in the name of Jesus. But it never uh, outlines a way to heal someone. So if I go up and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And then another person goes up and says, you know, Jesus, heal this right now. Please just heal it in Jesus' name. Like, And they pray, you know, muscles come together, bones come together. Am I going to say, hey, that was wrong. You can't, you can't pray for healing like that. That's not how you do it. No, it's in Jesus' name. They're not against you. They might have a little bit different way of doing it, but it all comes back to Jesus. It's all the same principle that Jesus is going to do the healing. Yeah, one person might feel like not saying bones and stuff has more faith because you're just believing it's just Jesus' name. Okay, great. But the other person over here, they're still saying Jesus' name. They're not against each other. We have to, this is the biggest problem with division in the church to realize. Now, some division, like I said, is appropriate, but these divisions, like deliverance division, we have to realize we're not against each other. This is where we're going wrong. We're going on, you know, public forums or going um, and talking with people and we're having these critical conversations um, about other the other group when we're not against each other. We need to realize we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against, um, you know, uh, principalities of the air, like Ephesians says. Like, why can't we not get that? It, we're not against each other. So Jesus makes it very clear. We're not to divide over this, right? They're not against us. They're, they're doing it in the same name, right? And Jesus didn't ask, well, what method are they doing it? Are they doing it this way? He's like, just don't stop them. They're doing it in my name. That's it. Because he wasn't concerned about method. He's concerned about the glory. He's concerned about the power. The glory goes to Jesus and the power comes from Jesus. That's it. Only demons lead by Jesus. So, and let me tell you, this school of thought can get you down a road of saying, well, you can't heal cancer because it's not in the Bible. So again, let me explain. People will say, well, you can't cast Jezebel out because Jezebel is not a spirit in the Bible. I don't see Jesus casting spirit, Jezebel out. Some will actually say, I, I don't see Jesus casting out and naming spirits, but we're going to get to that in a sec. But um, but again, that would be like me saying you can't heal cancer because it's not in the Bible. Well, I don't see anyone get healed from cancer in the Bible, so that means I can't pray for cancer. You see what I'm saying? This can get you down a very slippery way of thinking because it's not necessarily the method, it's the power, right? Cancer is just like any other infirmity we see in the Bible. Why? Because the one thing it has in common is that it can be healed by Jesus' name. So whether it's Jezebel or it's a spirit of fear— Jesus's name is the one we're using to cast out. Even if you're in the in the line of thought that says, I don't believe Jezebel's real. You can say, oh man, I really think they're deceived. I think they're, you know, when they're casting Jezebel, there's really no spirit there. That's great. But there's no reason to divide because we're all just doing it in Jesus's name. We're all doing it to help others. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to look at my notes here. Um. Uh, this, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I wrote too, like the disciples didn't sing to Jesus. So why, do, why do we worship at, at church? You know what I mean? Like this school of thought that if it's not written in the Bible, uh, it's not biblical. Obviously, yes, of course we know that there are sins, but if I want to sing to Jesus, just because the disciples didn't do it, that doesn't mean I can't sing to Jesus. Like that just doesn't make any sense to me. So, and again, no one is saying cast out demons by Beelzebub or by another name. We're all doing it in the name of Jesus. Um, and, you know, the school of thought that believes, okay, um, no, it's just Jesus' name. You, They don't need to do anything special. You just go there and you cast a demon out. Well, we say it's just Jesus, but yet we also say we must repent, right? If it's just Jesus, then why don't you just believe and you're fine. So, it is just Jesus' name, but people must repent and show fruit in keeping with their repentance. Demons have legal rights. How do you think they got there in the first place, right? They don't come in. Like, I wouldn't, you wouldn't find a spirit of marijuana in me because I've never smoked marijuana in my life. Guess what you did find in me? A spirit of lust. Because why? Because I had lust before. Guess what you did find in me? A spirit of pornography because I did look at pornography before. 
And you might ask, okay, Taylor, though, how do we know that those are separate spirits? Let me give you an example. You can lust without looking at pornography, without masturbating. You can look at pornography without masturbating. You can look at pornography and masturbate without being perverse. Or you can have all four. So they're all separate agreements. You lust, and then lust turns into pornography. You look at porn, porn turns into masturbation. You do, you masturbate, you get bored of that, you go on to perversion, and you you think of perverse things now when you do those things. It's like, um, let me break it down to you this way. People who have a spirit of anger, we'll normally talk to them and say, okay, what about rage? What about violence? What about murder? Because one leads to the other. And Derek Prince, a well-known person that talks about deliverance, talks about this, that you, you can be angry, but what does anger want to do? It wants to make you violent. What is violent? Or sorry, what does anger want you to do? It wants you to be rageful. What is rageful? Rage want you to do? It wants you to be violent. What does violence want you to do? It wants you to murder. These are all separate agreements. So when I say agreements, just to break down some of the Christianese, demons come in through our agreements. And an agreement is like, if I go and look at pornography, that's an agreement with pornography. I'm agreeing with sin over agreeing with God, right? So that just gives an open door for the devil. I'm literally being like, hey, come on into my party. So same thing, you can have an agreement with anger and I don't have an agreement with murder, but anger over the years, if I do not turn, it could lead to murder. And that's a separate agreement. And that's why we see these things as separate spirits. I feel it necessary to break this down here before I go on, um, because I, I should have started with this, but I gave you the two schools of thought, but let me explain more in depthly what the process looks like of deliverance for these the two sides that seem to be dividing over this. One side will, you know, have the person repent, get baptized, get filled with the Holy Spirit. Same way of salvation, but then when it comes to deliverance, it's okay, any unclean spirit leave. Or if the person repented of fear, okay, fear leave. If they cough or if they cry, okay, praise God, you're free forever. You're good. You know, you're free from all the demons that you had. The school of thought that I would normally subscribe to is we do the exact same thing, but when they get baptized and everything, we go through each agreement that they've made in their life, which is, you know, lust, pornography, masturbation, fear, anger. Uh, All these things are completely different. I know they might sound the same, but fear is not the same as anxiety. Fear leads to anxiety, but they're not the same. We go to rejection, all these things, and we call out each spirit individually because we see them as being separate things. And again, people say, well, that's not biblical. It's biblical because what we're doing is we're just taking the principle in the Bible and we're repeating it. Okay, Jesus cast the spirit of infirmity out. Great. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do that also for a spirit of lust. I'm going to do that also for a spirit of anger. There's nothing unbiblical about it. Again, the Bible doesn't outline the method. It just says, by the name of Jesus, demons are cast out. That's all it is. And there's no, there's no stipulations by, well, you can't do this in terms of using Jesus' name. So that to explain the two processes, that's what it is. And for our process, we believe that Certain demons won't leave if you're not repenting. So if I try to cast the spirit of pornography out, but you're still looking at pornography, that spirit's not going to leave until you turn away. Because if that spirit could leave without you repenting, meaning without you turning away from it, then that would negate the free will that God gave all of us when he created us. So if you're trying to cast the spirit of lust out of me and I'm saying, I want lust, you're telling me that spirit still has to leave? No. Jesus' name is above every other name, but it doesn't negate our free will. That's why that some of us will not be saved because just because Jesus wants us to be saved, our free will actually overrides even God's desire for our lives. He gave us that permission to have free will. It's not that our free will is more powerful per se. I mean, it, it's just different things. Like Jesus can't force healing onto people. Remember, Jesus went into his own town and he said, prophet's not welcome to his own town. He barely healed anyone. Well, why is that? Well, it's because people didn't believe, right? So their own free will stopped them from receiving deliverance, stopped them from feeling, from receiving healing. This, this idea that Jesus just went up to people and placed their hands on them and just commanded them to be healed is not what we see in the Bible. Almost every place in the Bible we see Jesus is there and someone comes up to Jesus and asks for the healing, right? They believe they had the problem and then they receive the healing or the deliverance for it. Like the Pharisees, they never believed they had a problem. So Jesus didn't go up and cast demons out. So again, their free will had to come first. So again, the first school of thought just says, no, they all just have to leave. But that doesn't make any sense because if they're still operating within fear or lust, fear or lust does not have to go because the person, even if they're saying, I don't want it, well, you do want it because you're still doing it. So 
the demon saying, I have authority to be here because they've given me the authority to be here. Um, and I hope that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, back up a little bit and listen to that again, because it's very important to understand that demons have rights to people. Like they don't just leave. Like if that was the case, I would just go walk around and like command demons out of everyone without saying anything. But the person has to be open and they have to want Jesus and they have to want to turn away. If they don't repent, you don't receive anything. Even John said, you know, bear fruit in keeping with your repentance. Like you have to prove that you're repentant. So again, the school of thought that no, 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 it's just, you just cast it out. It's just Jesus's name. It is just Jesus's name. 100,000%. But Jesus's name cannot negate your free will. It, it just can't. It cannot make the demon leave if you are holding on to the demon. It's just like Jesus can't make you go to heaven if you want to go to hell. <laughs> it's just how it works. That would go against free will, the basic principle of human life on this earth. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so yeah, you must repent. And that is the difference between the two sides of thought. You, you have to turn away. So the thought that all the demons just leave and you say all unclean spirits leave. And if no one manifests, meaning if I'm praying for a demon for someone and they don't, nothing happens and they don't get delivered, I don't tell them, hey, you're free of all your demons. You mu they must have already left. No, you probably didn't repent. So the demons have authority to not leave or to not manifest. Again, this is my school of thought and I find it to be extremely biblical. But um, again, I'm not here to divide against the other group. I'm here to more shed a light on why we see some things this way. And I, I believe that there's unity to be had in all of this because at the end of the day, we want to get people born again. We want to get people filled with the Holy Spirit. If we're ever blaming our problems on demons, that's where we have an issue. The issue is with us and our sinful hearts. Demons do not make us sin. We make ourselves sin. Demons tempt us into sin. And when we have a demon on the inside, there is a strong, strong temptation to sin. But it's still our doing. He doesn't like make my arm go and grab my phone and look at pornography. I, I do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it's funnily enough, like a lot of people who want to argue, no, 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 demons aren't on the inside of Christians. I would challenge you to find one place in the Bible where someone's being tempted from the outside. You know, people are always like, oh, it's a temptation from the outside. I'm not saying temptations from the outside don't exist, but I, I don't see even where it talks about that in the Bible. It just talks about people who had demons inside of them. The only time I really see it is when Jesus was in the desert being tempted by the devil himself. Remember, the devil's not omnipresent. So the devil can only be in one place at one time. So yes, the devil went and tempted Jesus, but Jesus didn't have demons. He didn't sin. You can't have demons if you don't sin. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> um, but again, Nowhere in the Bible, for the school of thought that's saying, it is unbiblical to cast out Jezebel. That makes it sound like it's a sin to cast Jezebel out, okay? But that, that's the wrong wording. Casting out Jezebel is not a sin. It doesn't ever say in the Bible, hey, if you cast, if you name a demon, it's a sin. It does not say that. <laughs> it doesn't even imply that, in fact. Um, so I think to say, oh, that's unbiblical. Now, we can say, we don't see that in the Bible, Um Sure, we don't. But again, we don't see healing cancer in the Bible, but everyone would be gung-ho to heal cancer and say, yeah, Jesus can do it. Um, and that is why, you guys, I want to make such a big deal about this is that Jesus told us to be led by the Spirit. Can't be led by our, our own human minds. Even the Bible. The Bible is written by the Spirit. So everything we do should be in line with the Bible. But that doesn't mean that the, the Spirit doesn't teach us new things that go in line with the Bible, but aren't necessarily maybe stated in, like, it doesn't say you can't smoke weed in the Bible, but we know by the Spirit's leading that we can't do that. So it's a combination of Spirit and the Bible. The Bible is Spirit. The Spirit wrote the Bible. So if we're going to accept the Bible, but say, oh, no, no, you can't just listen to the Holy Spirit. Well, why can't it be both? Because I'm pretty sure the the Spirit wrote the Bible, and the Spirit speaks to all of us. Now, I think a lot of people have fear. So they have fear that they're not going to hear from God, right, or people aren't going to hear from God, right? And I totally understand that. It says we're supposed to discern all the spirits. But it makes us Bible Nazis to the point where it's like, if it's not in the Bible, it just can't be. So let's say someone starts prophesying. Okay, well, that's not in the Bible. So is that really from God, God's mouth? Are you saying that God cannot speak outside of the Bible? They'd be like, well, no, of course. There are prophets in the world today. Even Jesus said, young women, young men and women would dream dreams and see visions. Well, there are visions from God and those aren't in the Bible. So we know that there is, um, there are things that are inspired by God. Prophecy, right? The Bible is prophecy. Prophecy just means spoken by God, right? That are not within the Bible. So, of course, we need to back everything by the Bible. But 
again, I'm not casting out demons by Beelzebub. I'm casting them out by Jesus's name and people are getting better and there's fruit um, of their deliverance. So to say that that's a sin, to say that that's witchcraft is, I think it's a little um, uh, premature, immature um, to say. I, I think it's, I think it's a bit, what's the word? Um, I think it's a little irresponsible because it's not, it's it's going off what we feel. Yes, we disagree, but that doesn't make something that I disagree with witchcraft. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah. there's It's just unbiblical to divide over this. If we only want to talk about things that are unbiblical, it's, it's unbiblical to divide over this and to cut people off um, because we believe a little bit different way about demons. This is exactly what the devil would want. Hey, be less concerned about getting people free and more concerned about how people are doing deliverance. Like, why do we have to be so concerned with how our brothers and sisters are casting out demons if they're casting out demons in Jesus name and they're spending hours upon hours helping people? And then we go and make fun of those people because they're doing it the wrong way in our eyes. That that's unbiblical actually. And dividing over that's unbiblical, right? It's okay to bring things to our mind. Hey, what about this, bro? Like, I don't, I don't know if this is right or sure, but to divide and to make fun that that is actually out of all the things we're talking about, I would say that's the most unbiblical thing. And it's very clear in scripture to not do that. So yes, hopefully you guys are not lost in this conversation. Um, again, for some of you that deliverance is new, uh, if I could recommend a resource, it would be Isaiah Saldivar and Derek Prince. They both talk about deliverance a lot. Now, Isaiah Saldivar does not necessarily believe in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. It's such a bummer. So it's hard sometimes to say, hey, go check him out. But I, I would say his teachings on deliverance are pretty solid, and and uh, that could give you guys more of the basic things. But um, I just I felt in my spirit very strongly that I needed to just bring up some of this disunity and to really call people to unify over deliverance right now because there's just no point in in um, dividing over over something like this. So, and again, one of the examples to use is you know people say, well, Jesus didn't name demons, Taylor. So why are you saying Jezebel and Leviathan can be a demon? Well, Jesus did call out legion. <laughs> so let's lo- go to Mark five one through thirteen, and I, and I want to make it clear that. You know, when we got down this road and we started delivering a spirit called Jezebel and spirits called Leviathan and things like this, um, these were not things that I wanted to do. (laughs) But when we pray for deliverance for people, we actually just ask the Holy Spirit to share with us what spirits these people might be suffering with. And God started giving us words like Leviathan and Jezebel. And then when we would command the spirit of Jezebel or Leviathan to manifest itself and to leave, that person would start screaming. That person would get superhuman strength and the, and the spirit would come out. And guess what? They would do better later. So to me, we did it in Jesus' name. We made sure they repented of its attributes and there, there's fruit to say that they got better. And we asked the Holy Spirit what this person had. We did not lead on our own understanding. My own understanding would just be like, uh, okay, just cast out all the unclean spirits. Well, no, we need to ask God what, you know, Jesus never did anything the Father didn't tell him to do. So everyone that Jesus prayed for, he knew where that person was at. He knew if they were repentant or not. And he and God told them to pray for that person. Do we do that with everyone? Do, can anyone who who administers deliverance do has have do we do that religiously where we pray about each person? I don't think so. So how do we expect to get the same results as Jesus? You know? Mark 5, 1 through 13. They went across the lake to the region of Gerasenes, where Jesus got out of the boat. A man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the iron on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, "'What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God?' Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus was saying to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of this area. A large herd of pigs was feeding in the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus to send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. So, very interesting story. A lot to unpack here. And, and I think 
there's a lot of insight into deliverance here. For one, it says, For Jesus was saying to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. He was saying, which means he had said that either multiple times or he was in the middle of saying that. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? So we know the demon actually did not leave when Jesus told the spirit to leave. So this idea that, no, 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 it's just Jesus's name. Okay, yes, of course, Jesus's name is the only one that has power to cast out demons, but um, obviously it wasn't leaving when Jesus was just telling him. So there was something uh, holding that deliverance back. It wasn't that the power wasn't there. That's where the confusion is. Not that the power is not in Jesus' name, but something was holding it back. So then Jesus says, what is your name? My name is Legion, replied for his name. So we see that Jesus specifically asked the spirit its name. He didn't say, oh, it's unbiblical to, to ask a name because demons don't have names and we're not supposed to name demons. No, he just said, what's your name? Well, so him asking a name implies that it's okay to, to, to have a name and that demons do have names and we can call names. Um, but even more to this, the person says legion. Now people have argued legion just means 2000. So he was just saying there were 2000 demons. It wasn't saying there was a demon called legion. Okay, great. Let's say it was that way. You're still saying this person had 2000 demons, which again tells me that it's not just, Hey, all spirits go that people can have many demons, not just one. People can have many, but to me, there's no biblical precedent to say that, that his name wasn't legion because Jesus says, what is his name? And then he says, my name is legion. Why would Jesus ask, what is your name? Why wouldn't Jesus just say, how many are you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if Legion truly indicates how many there were, then that person did not answer Jesus's, Jesus's question. Well, if Jesus asked and Jesus has all authority, then we know Jesus was not asking how many are there. He was asking, what is your name? He very, made it very clear. What is your name? My name is Legion. <laughs> so to me... That's the name, Legion. Um, And we don't see that that's unbiblical. That is something that Jesus did. And again, we can argue about this, but that's how I see it to be. Um, Yes. Um, So, yeah, Jesus displays he knew that he had, they had names and acknowledges their names. So why can't we, right? And even in Revelation, not to get into this, it says, don't, you know, Jesus is talking to the churches and he says, you know, you put up with that woman Jezebel, right? Um, and you can go read that in Revelation 2.20. To me, that's implying that there was, that he's talking about the spirit. Now, some people will say that's a person. But we see through all the letters, Jesus, Paul, all of them, they never call out a specific person. And now you're telling me that out of this whole church, Jesus is calling out one person and saying, like, you evil person. Many commentators have said that they do not believe that to be a person. They believe that to be something else. That Jesus was, they don't necessarily believe there was a spirit, but he was talking about attributes or, you know, uh, making a, uh, like a simile, you know, like saying that this person is like, you know, uh, the, the person of Jezebel in, in the book of the Bible and Kings. But point being is when he says, don't put up with the woman Jezebel, I, I believe that he is referring to that spirit that is just oddly specific. And we see now that doing deliverance, a spirit of Jezebel is, can be a spirit that, um, when it's in full manifestation, can wreak havoc in the church, um, can seduce people. All of these things that Revelation says very clearly right there. Um, so yeah, I find that interesting as well. Um, but again, I'm just bringing up all these points again to bring unity, to bring some understanding. And I think understanding is key because we all just need to have a conversation so that we can be unified over these things. And for those of you who are not a part of this that deliverance is new and you're like, I don't know what to believe. Um, I would say we need to be led by the Holy spirit, right? Um, there's no list in the Bible of demons, but he does talk about a spirit of fear. He does talk about legion. He does talk about infirmity. But again, he w- Jesus was led by the spirit. So he knew what spirit to call out and he did what the spirit and what God led him to do. So we need to be led by the spirit. And like I said, when we meet with people for deliverance, we just pray and we ask God, And I encourage a lot of people nowadays, and I encourage everyone listening, if you feel that you are bound to something, yes, there's a demon behind that, Um, like addiction, uh, you know, um, uh, being depressed, uh, fear, anxiety. Of course, there's a demon behind that. But even deeper mindsets, like, I'll just pray, God, convict me, show me where I'm still agreeing with with demonic spirits. Because if I'm not agreeing 
with any demons in my life, then I should look like Jesus because I'm perfect. <laughs> but that's just not the case. So I'm like, God, just reveal more. Reveal what spirits are still there, what spirits are still trying to, you know, entice me and drag me away and, 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 and um, you know, change who I am. And God shows you. God reveals it. So I think what's stopping people is pride again because if you would just pray and just ask God, God, what do I need to be delivered from? God would show you 100%. Um, and again, Jesus said we would do greater things than him. So just because we don't see it in the Bible, and I know this almost sounds like heresy, but it's not, it doesn't mean it's unbiblical. If it's backed by Jesus's name and it's it's the same principle, just apply to different things. Like I said with the healing, cancer wasn't healed in the Bible, but I'm just taking the same principle of healing in the name of Jesus be healed. And I'm praying for someone who has cancer and God can heal them. Um, we can do greater things than Jesus. And, and that's what we see here that, God has shown more people about deliverance. God has really showed us how to be free. He came to set the captives free. And I'm telling you, the one school of thought, I've watched many people leave. And if that person would be discipled for a year, we would see that they're still struggling with things. There are still demons. There are still strongholds. Uh, and many of those people, I, I, we've had the pleasure of helping. Praise God for that. But um, these things are deep-rooted. And this is discipleship. Discipleship isn't just doing Bible study. Like they didn't have the Bible in um, the days of Acts, right? Discipleship is helping someone to walk like Jesus. And over time we start seeing, oh yeah, you're still agreeing with that demon. Okay, let's change that agreement. Let's help you to repent and let's cast that demon out, you know? So I just want to bring unity in the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, when we read the Bible, the Bible is people's experience with the gospel. But then you have people telling me that my experience is... Uh, you can't listen to your experience. I 100% agree that the, my experience needs to be backed by God's word and by the Holy Spirit. But to say that experience has no validity to it is to say that the Bible has no validity to it because the whole New Testament is based off spirit and experience. The Acts is completely based on the experience. You don't read anything about casting out demons in the Old Testament. So they were learning by their experience and they were growing by their experience. They weren't growing by, you know, the Old Testament, like how we look at the New Testament to grow in, in deliverance. Listen, they were growing by the Holy Spirit, right? And we don't question what Paul and Peter and all them said, but they didn't have the Bible like we did. Like they were literally just listening to the Spirit and learning by their experience. So to negate experience altogether would negate the Bible because the Bible is full, filled with the experiences of the disciples. And to give a perfect example of this, um, you know, Peter gets the vision of, you know, no animal is unclean. Okay, even to the Christians of that day who were in the past, you know, um, non-believing Jews, um, they would have been like, yo, that is not of God because the Old Testament clearly states that we can't eat this, that we can't do this. But Peter's like, but this is the vision I got from God. So I'm just giving that example. I'm not going into details. They don't fit perfectly as examples, but I'm just going there to state that God gives us things and God leads us in sometimes ways that are shocking. Like I'm sure many were shocked and many wanted to divide, but no one today in the 21st century says that Peter got a, a fake false vision. That was the truth that God made everything clean. So again, that was, they based a entire new Testament doctrine on Peter's experience with the Holy spirit. And that's why the, the Bible says test the spirits because we are, are led by the spirit, but sometimes the wrong spirit is leading us. So every day we have to test the spirit. Now people say, well, you got to test the spirit by the Bible. Yes, hundred percent. But also pray about things. If you get a word for someone, you need to pray on that. You need to fast on that maybe. And you need to really bring it to the Lord before you deliver it. That's what really testing the spirits is to make sure you're hearing from God. So again, I'm sure they tested the spirits when Peter got that vision, but they never said, oh, it's your experience. And that's not in the old Testament. So that's not true. So we have to be very careful with making these black and white statements, you know, and we also have to really be careful of people's uh, feelings, you know. Um, but for those of you who are here for just teaching and you don't know about this division, I for one, I hope you're getting something out of this and I hope it's not a totally use, useless conversation. I just feel like the Lord made it clear that this is something I needed to talk about. But um, I also want to talk about, you know, if you feel that you have a demon, um, whatever case of life you're in, or, and like I said, I, I had 20. So if there's a demon, there's probably multiple, but, um, the number one thing we have to know about deliverance is that we can't blame, uh, the demons. 
it's our own sinful desires that lead us into sin, right? So James um, chapter 1, I'm going to get there slowly. Oh, I'm in Revelation. I went too far. Okay, here we go. James chapter 1, verses 13, 13 through 15. Um, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Um, excuse me. Bug flew right in my face. Sorry. Let me read that again. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own sinful evil desires, he is dragged away and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. So, if you feel that you have spirits, or if you're conducting deliverance, or if you just want to understand more about demons, when we first started this ministry, when you see demons leave and people's lives get totally changed, it's just like, oh my gosh, we could just cast the demons out of people. Oh my gosh, we could just get back people baptized. But at the core of it, our hearts still have to be for God. You might, person that's listening right now, you might have 60 demons, but you might be sold out for God. And yeah, you might get tormented, but man, like you're on fire for God. Because, and listen, I've seen people that have been following God for years and then they get delivered from all these demons. Well, that's a perfect example, just like me. I can't blame my problems on my the demons. I got to blame my problems on myself because it's my own desire that let, like, again, you're not going to find a spirit of marijuana in me. So at one point I decided to sin and that sin allowed a demon to come in. That's just the bottom line. It's my own desires, right? Demons feed on our desire. I've never, ever been tempted to go smoke marijuana because there's no desire inside of me. Demons don't make desires. They just feed on them. So now I had a desire to lust in my young years. So the demon said, oh, look at that desire. I'm going to go feed on that desire and I'm going to go be like, hey, go lust, go lust, go lust. And that pushed me over the top to go look at pornography. It's just like getting drunk. I've never been drunk in my life. And I don't say that to be like, oh, look at me. But I've never even been tempted to be drunk because in my mind, I never had a desire. I just said, no, I'm never going to do that. Boom. Desire gone. It's our own desire. So if you're struggling with a spirit, the first thing you need to realize is that it's your own desires that lead you into those sins. Of course, a demon has a huge part to play and it, it is tormenting, especially with people, a lot of demons that are strong and they've been in witchcraft and stuff, man, those demons can torment you day and night. But it's still our own simple desires. If you get the demon cast out, but your desire is still for lust, you will go back to lust, demon or not, and the demon will just come right back in. So we can't blame demons. That's number one. We just cannot blame demons. And let me tell you, there, there is a demon behind most things. But again, it cannot be about deliverance. It's It really, our mindsets going into deliverance need to be, do we want to follow and honor the king even without freedom. So if Jesus never had deliverance, do I still want to follow God because he's righteous, holy, and just? If he never set me free from anything, do I still want to follow God because he's holy and just? No, praise God, he sets us free. That's the power of Christ. But our hearts need to be in a place of, even if I never got free from anything, am I willing to follow God and to fight against lust, to fight against fear, to fight against pride, whatever the spirit is that I'm struggling with, to fight against it, even if there's no freedom, that's when we have that mindset and we go into deliverance, man, people get set free from demons so fast because they don't want it. They don't want it anymore. They, they don't, they have truly surrendered to God's will over their own will. Now, people who come into deliverance are like, are you sure that's a sin? Oh, I can't do that. Oh man, they're not going to get delivered. They're just going to go back because God has not taught you to, or you have not allowed God to teach you how to hate something. You know, when I got freed from lust in, in the fasting, I think another thing God really did in the fast is he made me hate it so much that even if there was a spirit tempting me, it's like, again, like this verse, the desire was gone for that sin. So the demon couldn't tempt me in that desire anymore because the desire disappeared. He can't just create desire out of thin air. So again, like even though I had demons for two years still, I never sinned. I never fell into, you know, pornography and stuff because the desire was gone. I, I let God... Uh, um, teach me how to hate that thing, hate that sin. And again, if you're struggling with the spirit, let me give you kind of a, a beginning to how we help people. Okay. Again, some people say, okay, well, you, we'll just cast it out, but you need to be ready to renew your mind. If you cast out a demon and you are not changing your ways and you're not renewing your mind, you're just going to go back to those old mindsets. And we know as humans, how hard it is to change our mind about something. Um, Again, like if I, if I truly believe that I'm ugly, it's very hard 
to teach me to believe the other way. Even though that's a lie universally, like God is saying, no, you're beautiful. I still can't believe it. And I'll break down that in a sec, but let me give you the best example I can. You don't repent. If, if you have a spirit of control, like, man, I'm just a control. I need to control things. And if I don't, I'm tormented. Like I just need to control. Yes, that's demonic, but you don't repent of control by not trying to control. Like, okay, well, I got to go out in my day and I'm just not going to control. I'm not going to control. Not. Because even if you're not doing the control outwardly in your mind, you're still being tormented by the thing. Here's how you overcome control. You fill yourself with Jesus and you learn how to trust. Control is the absence of trust, right? You have trust for God. It's like, oh, wow, I don't need to control anything. I totally trust God with my finance. I totally trust God with, you know, driving cross country. Like I totally, like I can let, I can let my sister drive my car because I totally trust God that he's going to keep my car safe or whatever the case, you know? And I'm using that as my own example because I got delivered of control. It was like, no one can drive my car because I paid a lot of money for it and I don't want to get wrecked. I don't want to get dirty, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, I'm just consumed by this thing because I don't trust God at the core of it. I don't trust that God is over. Control says that, I believe that I can do things better than God, but trust just says, God, I, it's, it's a, it's fake news that I can control anything. So God, I just lean into you and trust. Same with pride, right? Like when I realize that I'm nothing in God and I really fill myself with God and his identity for me, how can there be pride? Same with fear. If I really, um, realize that, I have nothing to fear because God can is totally over me. It's same thing with like trust. If I totally trust God, then what is there to fear? You see, but I don't go, okay, I need to repent of fear. So I'm just not going to fear, but that's not filling it up with any. Jesus has to take the place of each and every stronghold. I'm telling you, deliverance just can't happen in one day because you have made a lifetime of, of, I mean, I'm not saying Jesus can't do it. Jesus can deliver you in five seconds, but you have made a lifetime of agreeing with fear. You have made a lifetime of agreeing with self-hate. Like, let me give you an example. Um, I, I am not my desired weight, so I'm ugly. Okay. Well, that's a lie that you believe you're equating your beauty to your weight. Well, that's not how Jesus equates beauty, but you have made that lie. You've actually <laughs> learned how to renew your mind in the negative way so well that the truth is not enough. You will still believe you're ugly because you've trained yourself. So then, you know, I'll say, okay, well, you got to go in the mirror every day and tell yourself you're beautiful. Well, I can't do that. That's lying. I'm like, but you've lied to yourself to tell yourself you're ugly when you're not. You've lied to yourself to tell yourself that if I'm not my desired weight, then I'm ugly. Well, that's not, that's a, that's actually a lie. The objective truth is that you're beautiful in Christ. But again, if we're ever finding our beauty in any other thing, but Jesus of course, you're going to develop that lie. It's the same thing with fear if I, it, or with control. If I'm ever finding my security in anything else but Jesus, then I'm going to be more controlling than more trusting in God. Now, the correct thing to the weight thing is saying, okay, wait, my weight doesn't equal how God sees me. God loves me because I'm a child of God. I, my identity is in Christ. See, the devil wants to steal your identity. If you hate yourself, if you have insecurity, the devil's trying to steal your identity and make you believe that who you are and how you're loved by people has to do with what you can do and what you can control on yourself. So I got to put on makeup. I got to look beautiful. I got to be, you know, I got to have a six pack for the dudes out there. The truth is only Jesus can define your identity. Only Jesus wants to define your identity. But when we place all of these lies and other things like, okay, I, I'm only good looking if I have a six pack. Well, that's a lie. That's you saying that something that you can do can make you beautiful, but only God can make you beautiful. So I hope that kind of helps you. You can apply that same idea to all these things. We believe so many lies about ourselves, right? Like I'll give you an example. I've got delivered of rejection. Well, then a few weeks later, I go upstairs in the morning and no one says good morning to me. And the person that I feel like I started to agree with rejection was my dad. And again, it started to happen. Even though the spirit was gone, all of a sudden there was a temptation. You're like, well, my dad didn't say good morning. So he's rejecting me. He doesn't like me. And I was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I can't agree with that lie. That's a lie. And if the devil can get me to agree with that lie, I will start to feel rejected. And then guess what? A spirit of rejection will come in and it'll always lie to me. So now, even if my dad isn't trying to reject me, I, I will perceive it as rejection. You know, I can be super nice to someone, but they can perceive that I'm rejecting them because of their own issues, their own spirits. All demons are lying spirits. So if you have a spirit of rejection, it's going to lie to you and say, oh, they didn't text you back in an hour. So that means they don't like you. They're rejecting you. And I know a lot of people are, that are listening right now are being like, yep, I've had that where it's like, oh, they didn't text me back. Oh my gosh, did I say something wrong? Am I da, 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 da? like, 
your insecurity starts flaring up instead of being like, wait, God, like you are my judge. I didn't say anything wrong in, in this text and I'm not being rejected. And even if they do reject me, I'm not rejected by you, God. So, so again, I almost gave way to that agreement again with rejection. And I had to renew my mind and be like, no, that's not the truth. Just because he didn't say good morning, it doesn't mean that he's rejecting me. He probably does not even realize he's not saying good morning. <laughs> I hope that helps you. And I know this has been the longest podcast ever. And probably to some of you, it's like, it doesn't even apply, but I applaud you if you've made it to the end. And, and I do think it does actually apply. I'm going to go back on that because this is a division that's coming to everyone who believes in deliverance. And uh, we need to be clear. Listen, I, if it was up to me, I don't want to cast demons out at all. It's so enjoyable because I see the fruit of it, but it is not fun. It's, it's hard going through people's life. It's hard yelling at demons and commanding them to go and, and, being frustrated and, and all these things, but it's what God called us to. And, and it's the greatest gift. I mean, man, I would not be the man I am today if I was not delivered of all these demons inside of me. You know, I mean, my dad, for instance, he's changed so much in the last six months. He's also got delivered of 30 demons just because we've allowed God to show us that we have demons. And so he's shown us, we could, I could have lived another 10 years and still believe that I didn't have any demons and I'd probably be just fine. Maybe, but Point is, that we just allowed God to show us our wickedness still, little areas, and uh, even things that me and my dad hadn't done in years, but we did those things, so there were spirits inside of there. We got delivered of them, and you can walk away with this saying, I don't believe it, and here's the thing, you're going to be judged on what you know, and for the rest of your life, you can't say you don't know about deliverance now because you've heard it in this, this podcast, but um, if you want to know more about deliverance, I gave you some of those resources, but also reach out to me uh, on the Instagram or whatever, and I'll make more episodes on it if that's something that people want to hear, because I know this one was a little bit to a certain situation, but then also using it to teach others about um, deliverance. But in terms of the whole unity thing I was talking about, I want to make clear, people are like, as Christians, we all need to unify. Okay, well, define Christian, because to me, not everyone who says they're a Christian is a Christian. So for one, that's out the door. I am not going to unify with every person that calls himself a Christian, because the bottom line is they're not. Like, that's delusional. You can call yourself whatever you want, but that doesn't make you a Christian. Um, the second thing is like, well, you know, the people that really believe in Jesus. Okay, well, define belief. To me, we need to unify over people who believe in repentance, meaning holiness. They need to turn away from your sin. You need to be righteous before God that people that believe we need to be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins that it says in the Bible that to become a new person, Romans 6, you can read that passage. And people that you do need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And lastly, people who believe in the supernatural gifts of the Spirit because to deny the supernatural gifts is to deny one-third of the Godhead. So that means you believe in two-thirds of God. You believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Scriptures. And that's that's not the gospel. Anything else than that, I don't see means to divide over. Now, if a brother falls into sin, of course, I need to. I, the Bible makes it clear that I need to bring that to him. And if he continues, I need to divide. But guess what? It still goes back to what I'm saying at the beginning because he's not repenting anymore. If you're in sin, you're not repenting. So, again, I really do think it comes down to repent, be filled with the Holy, be baptized, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. If we are united on those things, then I don't see any need to divide with you. Listen, some personalities are hard. You might do something a little differently. You might baptize a little differently. You might pray a little longer than I want you to pray. You might heal a little different, but it's all in Jesus' name. And guess what? People are getting better. People are getting healed from cancer. People are getting set free from lust. People are getting on fire for Christ. And how dare we say that that's the wrong way to get someone on fire if it's in Jesus' name and and. And we're teaching them the correct way to get born again. We, we can't divide over this, you guys. Um, and I want to also make a call. If you need deliverance, please reach out. I, I'm, I want to make it clear. If you have never been delivered from a demon, you have one. And that I don't mean that in a mean way. And don't think, oh my gosh, Taylor's thinking of me right now. And he thinks I have demon. No, like I really never think of that. But from my experience, everyone has demons. And again, I'm here. I'm preaching. <laughs> And praise God for the podcast. And I still had things that I needed to get delivered of, and I probably still do. It's about coming to the throne humbly. Get rid of our religion. Oh, well, Christian can't have demons. Well, if a Christian can't have a demon, then why are you bound to lust? Either your Holy Spirit doesn't work correctly, or Christians can have demons. You know, because the Holy Spirit says you have self-control. So either there's something in there negating the, that Holy Spirit or your Holy Spirit doesn't work correctly or you don't have the Holy Spirit. So 
I've found, just like we see in the Bible, the people that come humbly to God are the ones that receive. The people that have this religion, like the Pharisees, they don't receive anything. And they tend to die off with their law. Speaking of law, (laughs) seems like a hot topic as well. Um, We will be doing an episode on that when I get back. Super excited for that. God has really showed me a lot in that. And I think it's going to set a lot of people free in their minds. Um, Praise God. Um, But yeah, anyways, I hope this helped. I hope this is good. I think some people uh, will hopefully really grow from this. Um, Look forward to more podcast episodes. DM me if you want me to preach on something specific. I love catering to whatever you guys really need. Uh, And yeah, this podcast has probably gone way too long, so I should just wrap it up now. It's probably my longest one. Uh, I love you guys so much, and that's why I come on here and do these things. Um, And every time I get an email, it's so amazing to see how God's using this podcast. Like, it's not even me. Like, it's just, it's his podcast. He's speaking today. Um, And yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Um, Ministry has been a little slow for us, uh, but it's been good. You know, God's really been refining us and teaching us new things and teaching us how to suffer, uh, and again, it's American suffering, of course, like poor pitiful me, but, you know, just learning how to deal with some persecution, how to really be the bigger person, how to, um, you know, love others, uh, even with their faults. Like we all have personalities, you guys, even if we all are united on the same belief, we, we all are human. Like let's have some grace for each other. Let's just learn to love each other. You know, and, and as I get further and further in ministry, like even some of my podcast episodes, I, I regret them, not regret them, but I look back and I'm like, mm, I would say that differently now because I just seen like, man, it's all about love and it's not the love that the church has preached. Like, oh, just love people unconditionally. No, I'm not saying that. I just mean when we preach the truth, it must be in love. And I think I've preached the truth. I don't, I wouldn't change the content. I would, I would change the delivery because I think I've preached the truth in anger at times or, uh, without love. And I'm just saying that to be open and honest, but, uh, I love you guys so much. And I, I hope this helped, uh, for those of you who are wrestling and like, what school of thought is correct? Is Jezebel real? Is it not? Just ask the Lord. Like, I'm not here to convince anyone. I'm here to help people. And I can quote all my experience all day long, but at the end of the day, like it's all God. And you know, when these arguments came out, when these discussions came out, we all in our family really sought after God because we don't want to do anything God doesn't want us to do. I don't care to cast a judgment. And I'm not a deliverance ministry for those of you who think that like I'm first about getting people born again. Like demons are not like you need to be born again. You need to surrender to Jesus. That's number one. Um, but we also know that demons are a huge part of the, the uh, situation. So we want to help people get those out too. Anyways, not to rant anymore. I'm like, did I, did I say everything I need to say? I think God's just saying like, let it go, bro. Um, you, you've said everything. So praise God for that. <laughs> um, love you guys again. If you need anything, reach out. We will be back in three weeks. We're going to be back to a normal schedule. Um, new shirts are coming, summer shirts. They're super awesome. Like God's been giving me this idea for like two years and finally came to like fruition. So I'm stoked for that. Um, if you guys need anything, feel free to email us at hello at Jesus is offensive.com. I, I try to email back quick. If you haven't followed us on Instagram, it's Jesus is offensive. Um, and, uh, yeah, love you guys. And we will talk soon.